An important anomaly in expected utility theory concerns the level of risk aversion required to explain observed behavior. Consider the following one-off bet involving the flip of a coin. Head, you win $550. Tail, you lose $500. Would you accept this bet? Barbaris et al., 2006, offered this bet to experimental participants, including those with substantial wealth, such as professional investors with wealth above $10 million. 70% of the sample turned down the bet. Under the axiom of diminishing marginal utility, we could conclude people are risk averse to small bets, but for sufficiently high levels of wealth, the expected utility curve is approximately linear and people tend to take favorable bets. The minimum utility function curvature required to reconcile an investor with $10 million declining a 50-50 bet as small as plus $550 or minus $500 would imply that they reject immensely favorable bets, which is not realistic. Rabin, 2000, showed that rejection of bets over moderate stakes can require absurd rates of risk aversion. For instance, if a person who acts consistent with expected utility theory always turns down a 50-50 bet to win $110 or lose $100, whatever their initial level of wealth, they will also turn down a 50-50 bet to win $1 billion, lose $1,000. At face value, that is ridiculous, and that is the crux of Rabin's argument. Rejection of the low value bet to win $110 and lose $100 would lead to absurd responses to higher value bets. This leads Rabin to argue that risk aversion or the diminishing value of money has nothing to do with the rejection of the low value bets. Suppose we have someone who rejects a 50-50 bet to gain $110, lose $100. They are an expected utility maximizer with a weakly concave utility curve, that is, they are risk neutral or risk averse at all levels of wealth. We can plot this on a chart. The horizontal axis is wealth and the vertical axis is utility. The current wealth and utility of that wealth is marked. We can then mark the two possible outcomes of the bet, the gain of $110 and the loss of $100. This graph is not to scale. I am exaggerating the size of the gain to make the point visually stark, but the argument holds regardless. The utility of each outcome will be a point on these vertical lines. The expected value of the bet is W plus 5. That is also marked. As the person rejected the bet, the expected utility of the bet must be less than or equal to the utility of current wealth. The point on the vertical line at W plus 5, where we mark expected utility, must align with or below the point on the vertical line at W where we mark current utility. The expected utility of the bet is the probability weighted utility of each of the two possible outcomes. The angle of this new line doesn't matter, simply that it is of positive slope. From this, we can infer the relative utility of winning and losing the bet. As the person is risk averse at all levels of wealth, we can draw the following lines as the least risk averse they could be while still rejecting the bet. We now have part of the utility curve. The slope of these two lines allows us to infer that they weight the average of each dollar between their current wealth, WE, and their wealth if they win the bet, W plus 110, only 100 100 and tenths, or 10 elevenths, as much as they weight the average dollar of the last $100 of their current wealth between W minus 100 and W. We can also say that they, therefore, weight their W plus 110th dollar at most 10 elevenths as much as their W minus 100th dollar. We can now do the same at W plus 210. We have assumed that they will reject the bet at all levels of wealth, so they will also reject at this wealth. We can therefore infer another piece of the utility curve, or more specifically, a curve for the least risk averse they could be. Iterating the previous calculations, we can say that they will weight their W plus 320th dollar only 10 elevenths as much as their W plus 110th dollar. This means they value their W plus 320th dollar only 10 elevenths squared as much as their W minus 100th dollar. As we infer additional pieces, we can see that this person rapidly declines in the rate at which they place utility on further wealth. We can also extend it in the other direction with losses below their current wealth. Keep iterating in this way and you end up with some ridiculous results. You value the $2,100 above your current wealth only 40% as much as your last current dollar of your wealth. 10 on 11 to the power of 10, reducing by a constant factor of 10 elevenths every $210. Or you value the 9,000th dollar above your current wealth at only 2% of your last current dollar, 10 on 11 to the power of 40. This is an absurd rate of discounting. 
Taking this iteration to the extreme, it doesn't take long for additional money to have effectively zero value. Hence the result, reject the 50-50 win $110, lose $100 bet, and you'll reject the win any amount, lose $1,000 bet. 